Brad Sweet and Tyler Courtney from the front row. Dominic Selzy and Spencer Baston in row number two. Kyle Larson and Corey Day in row three. Row four, the 19 of Brett Marks and the 16 T of Cole Macedo. Row five, Zeb Wise and Jacob Allen. East Bay Raceway Park. We got them racked, we got them stacked, and we've got the grand stands packed. Let's go racing off at turn number four. We are green, maybe. We're yellow. Kyle Larson around on the front straightaway along with Justin Peck and an issue as well for Connor Morrell. Kyle Larson kept going. The car never came to a stop, so I'm not sure if he will retain his starting spot. I assume he will, but the bad day continues here for Justin Peck as he has stopped down in the mud on the front straightaway along with the 28M of Connor Morrell. I see you on the scene down there, Tony. What's it look like? Everybody got jammed up on that inside line chase right off the start. And of course we saw the 57 of Kyle Larson pull that 360, keep it floored and keep going. Uh, but no noticeable damage on either the 13 of Peck or the 28M of Bradenton, Florida's Connor Morrell. You can see them. They're lined up behind both those two race cars. And I think of course, those are those famous last words, but I think these guys should be good to go. No, scratch that. They're taking Morel to the work area. And so we're going to head over there and see what's going on. Tony, I think the 57 has a flat left rear. Kyle Larson has a flat left rear tire, and he will have to take that car to the attention of the Silva Motorsports crew. Yes, it is indeed flat. And so, unfortunately for our friend Dennis Folks, he's going to have to hope for a miracle here from Larson to come from the hot pit back to the win. As you take a look at the replay here, Larson. So it starts with Tyler Courtney and Spencer Baston getting into each other. Courtney comes down the track into the side of Dominic Sells. He stacks up everybody behind him. Larson gets tangled up and then trying to avoid the mess. Peck and Morrell. Good look at the comp cams replay with Kyle Larson heading into the work area. Tony. What's going on down there? I see Morell's also leaving the, the well, work area. Well, yeah, they pulled Connor Morell in, and I'm going to be honest with you, they seem to have looked at everything, and then they just got him back out. We're going over to Kyle Larson here. They're pulling that left rear off. Pretty simple change. And the 24D hitting the pit area as well. Danny Sam's here. Jacking him up. It's a flat left rear as well on the 24, Chase. Thank you very much, Tony. So that looks like the new tire already on the Silva Motorsports 57. And you could tell that thing got absolutely destroyed with all that wet dirt down there on the inside, kind of in the infield of the racetrack there, the right side of the 57. Looks like it got a whole new paint scheme over there. And it looks like they are tightening up the left rear for Larson, the 24D of Danny Sams, as you mentioned there, Tony. He's down there as well, and they're making the necessary repairs to get him back onto the racetrack. Hey, Chase, uh, Paul Silva, he's one of the best for a reason, right? They come in to make a change to that left rear, uh, but Paul also took the opportunity to make a quick adjustment to the torsion stop. So Paul Silva and Kyle Larson already trying to improve their race car as he heads back out on the track. Yeah, Kyle Larson has made repairs, and he is back to full strength as he ex exits the hot pit. Back to full strength for Kyle Larson. He will drive to the tail end of the field and have what will be a very um, interesting drive back through the field here. It should be fun to watch him. Danny Sams also made repairs. That 24D car coming back onto the speedway as well. Still no laps complete. 30 to go here in this 15,000 win battle at the Bay feature event. So with the issue for Larson, that will slot Corey Day now into the fifth position for this restart. So the entire inside row of, so row eight, row nine, and row 10, Peck, Sams, and Morell, all of them getting tangled up. That is a huge, an absolutely massive break for Tanner Thorson along with Larson. Tanner Thorson was inside of row number 11 and he's going to move up at least, at least four rows with those four cars getting an issue there. So here we go, coming back to the green flag, 30 laps still to go. We are back underway. 
Brad Sweet gets a good jump on the field into turn number one. Sunshine, Tyler, Courtney around. The oh, contact between Corey Day and Dominic Selzy. And we are going to stay green somehow. Somehow we are still green as Dominic Selzy's got front end damage. The nose wings collapse, but he's going to keep on going. Brad Sweet shows the way. Tyler Courtney in second. Spencer Baston in third. Corey Day fourth. And Brent Marks in the fifth spot. Brad Sweet likes the inside of the racetrack as he leads on lap number two, 28 to go. Spencer Baston, the first driver in the top five to work the outside of the racetrack, coming after the number seven BC of Tyler Courtney. Spencer Baston earlier on this afternoon had a decent run, not the one that he was hoping to start his season out with, but he looks sporty here in this second main event as he is absolutely ripping the high side of the speedway. Tyler Courtney catching up now to the, seven, to the 49 of Brad Sweet. And traffic, just as we saw earlier on today, is quickly going to become a factor. Right up the road, about 10 car lengths from Brad Sweet is the 47 of Dale Howard. Meanwhile, Kyle Larson not made much progress. He's only gotten by about three cars at the tail end of the field, and he is in jeopardy of going a lap down at this point in time. Brad Sweet and Tyler Courtney knows the tail end of turn number one. Courtney, a little mistake right there on the inside of the racetrack in turn one. Now Corey Day, he goes underneath the Spencer Baston. Corey Day's up to the third spot now. Battle for the lead off of turn number four. Here comes Sunshine. They're going to split the slower car of Connor Morrell. Sweet around the outside. Sunshine to the inside. Sunshine's got the lead off of turn number two. Tyler Courtney takes the top spot away from Brad Sweet. Sweet now works the middle part of the racetrack, gets to the top on the exit. Sunshine stuck behind the 47 of Dale Howard. He goes back to the inside behind the slower car. Sweet got the top side open. Now a little mistake up ahead as Aaron Reitzel gets over the cushion, checks up Brad Sweet, and Corey Day goes by for P2. Corey Day now up to second. Here comes Zeb Wise. Zeb Wise into the picture as well. Throw the top four under a blanket. Three wide for second off of turn number two. Zeb Wise goes from fourth to second in one corner. The 26th Rudine Racing Car on the move right now. Last year's All-Star Circuit of Champions titleist is up to second. Great stuff early as Tyler Courtney Tyler tries to put a lap down on Brenham Crouch. Just two cars ahead of Courtney is the 57 of Larson as he tries to get by Ryan Timms. Sunshine right around the bottom trying to find a way by the number eight of Corey Eliason. Not a guy that's going to miss the bottom too often, so might have to move up off that bottom is Sunshine. Now he does. He goes to the outside in turn three, opens up the inside of the racetrack for Zeb Wise. Might see a new leader off of turn number four. Wise can't get there, but he's right next to him down the front straightaway. Courtney has to go through the middle, opens up the inside for Zeb Wise, and he's going to take the lead down the back straightaway. Zeb Wise to the top spot down the back stretch. Courtney, what a move right there to slot back in front of him. Now Corey Day around the outside. He's up to second, looking for the lead to turn number one. Corey Day from out of nowhere. He is up to the lead. Larson goes around the cautions back out. Caution comes out as Kyle Larson goes around in turn number two. What a battle at the front of the field at East Bay. Corey Day had just taken the race lead away from Tyler Courtney, but the caution will negate that. He will be put back to second. What a battle at the front. Tony, what's up? The 83, the uh, Roth Enterprises machine, Dominic Selzy, you called it earlier, Chase. He uh, got damaged that front end, the entire nose wing caved in definite damage to the sheet metal that makes up that wing. The Roth Enterprises guy, a couple of Rico Abreu racing crew members over here, they've got a brand new nose wing. They're just going to work on unbolting the crushed down front one he's got on the car currently. So it should be a pretty quick nose wing change right here for Dominic Selzy. Thank you very much, Tony. Want to mention that Anthony Macri started 20th on the field. Macri's now cracked into the top 10, running in that 10th position. He looks pretty solid early on in this one. Also want to give a shout out 18th starter Eric Riggins Jr. He's up to 12th. Great run for the Charlotte, North Carolina native. As work continues on the Roth Enterprises 83 of Dominic Selzy. Yeah, Chase, it's just wild when you think about it. Of course, East Bay Raceway Park, it's not some big, fast half mile, but any time you lose any kind of aero dependency or, or help aerodynamically on one of these wing sprint cars, it's very noticeable to these drivers. Of course, would love the opportunity to talk to Dominic when this thing is all said and done, but for him to go for those, what, five or six or seven laps with that nose wing crushed and bent down and not helping the front end of this car turn the way that it was, pretty impressive to see him stay out there on the track and go as far as he did, as long as he could, 
the way that it was. Yeah, he knows he's a super sub. He knows he's got to try and do the best he can for James McFadden for when he comes back. Uh, Selzy, I believe, will be in the car next week at Golden Isles as well. And then McFadden will rejoin with the series at Riverside in March, or sorry, in April, I should say. But Selzy knows what his job is. He knows he's got to try and keep that car in the points hunt. As we take a look at the Frozen Farmer Choose Cone or the Pick Pint, Yes, there is real ice cream inside of those pick pints, actually. Just don't actually, run into them. Actually, Chase, there's only real ice cream in two of those. I ate the ice cream out of them. Oh, OK. Thanks for it. Yeah, it looked a little shaky. It didn't look like it was kind of on the ground too firmly. So that kind of makes some sense there, Tony. And I, I'm not surprised, man. I know how much you like ice cream. You had a couple cookies last night, too. Insomnia cookies. Yep. It's it's deadly. The good news is they've got the 83 of Dominic Selzy heading back towards on the track and Chase. You hit it obviously perfectly. Uh, it's Dominic Selzy's number one job to make sure that race car gets as many points as possible for Dennis and Teresa Roth because we all know charters are on the line at the end of this first season with high limit racing going national. That number 83 car, once James McFadden is back behind the wheel, they're going full time. They are a high roller. That car needs to stay out on track and finish. Dominic Selzy he's doing an awesome job right now. Yep, he is. Unfortunate circumstances puts him towards the tail, but he's done a great job here. He finished 12th earlier on, first night in the car in a long time, and uh, he did a good job. We've got 18 to go. Tyler, Courtney, Corey Day lead him back to the green flag. Tough restart there for Corey Day. Zeb Wise looks to go by him on the inside. Now Rico Abreu from out of nowhere. He's into the fourth position around the outside. Yellow, we've got some issues. I believe it was an issue with the start there as Corey Day was not side by side at all with Tyler Courtney coming off a of turn number four. So he will try it one more time with 18 to go. Courtney Day, then Wise, then Sweet, based in Abreu, Marks Wyndham up to eighth. Good run for him. Cole Macedo ninth and Anthony Macri in 10th. Yeah, Chris Wyndham started back in 14th. He's up to the eighth position, looking solid in the Vermeer Motorsports 55. Green flag. Tyler Courtney, another great restart there. Zeb Wise trying to find a way by Corey Day as they work off a of turn number two. They're side by side and give the spot back to Zeb Wise. Zeb up into the second position, rolling the inside of the speedway. Racetrack in absolutely primo shape. Now the 14 back around him on the outside. Corey Day back into second. Rico is making some moves. He's making some headway. Here comes Abreu down the back straightaway, closing in on Zeb Wise. Now he drops the 24 to the inside of the racetrack, coming after him for the third spot. Abreu trying to stand on the bottom step of the podium here in this one. Brad Sweet still in the fifth spot. Then Brent Marks, Anthony Macri, Spencer Mason, and Chris Windham. Now Brent Marks, he's going to go by Brad Sweet. Move Brent Marks into the top five. The 19 up into the fifth spot. Meanwhile, your top two pulling away is the 47 of Eric Riggins Jr. pulls into the infield. Your top two running different lines. Courtney on the bottom and Corey Day on the top. We got an issue off of turn number two. Two car, oh, three cars is... Larson gets caught up there with Casey Kane. And what a crazy race this has been for Kyle Larson. Around twice and now in an incident here. And once we see this cop cams replay, you will see that Kyle Larson literally had nowhere to go right there. The other driver that was involved that is not in the picture anymore was Cole Macedo. He pulled away from the incident. Uh, but Larson saw a hole open. He went to shoot through it. And Macedo, or I think we'll have to watch the replay there to see what exactly happened. But tough circumstances there. Unfortunately, our friend Dennis Folks, the uh, Durst Dice Roller, I don't think he's going to be taking home his share of that $2,500. 14 laps to go now. It's Sunshine leading it, followed by Corey Day, Zeb Wise, Rico Abreu, who started back in the... Rico started back in the 13th position. He's up into fourth now. Brad Sweet in fifth. Then Brent Marks, Anthony Macri, Spencer Baston, Chris Windham, and Austin McCarl now into the top 10 as we take a look at the comp cams replay here. It's going to be right here in front of us on the bottom of your screen. You'll see, I believe it's, or sorry, top of the screen. Sorry about that. You see right there, Cole Macedo comes up trying to keep the car fired. And if that didn't happen, Larson may have avoided it there. But uh, Cole Macedo doing everything he can to keep his car under fire. Casey Kane looks like he might take the number nine machine back into the work area. 
Don't see any damage from here. Obviously, I'm pretty far away. Tony Laporta might be able to report some for us. Tony, what's going on? Guys are uh, jumping all over this KKR number nine. They are going with a uh, right rear tire. They, so that's all they've brought over right now to the number nine. They're taking a look over the front end, but they're unbolting that right rear Hoosier. Some of the guys from CJB here, Clinton Boyle's on hand from Vermeer. They've got a new right rear, or at least a, a, a fresh right rear to go on here. So it seems like everything on the nine of Casey Kane should be okay once they get this new shoe put on the car, Chase. Thank you, Tony. Casey Kane, just a quick fix there for him. They're getting the wrecker hooked up to the 57 of Kyle Larson. I think on one of our camera shots there, it looked like Larson was taking the belts off. So not sure if he's going to continue on or not. That's unfortunate. A lot of people were looking forward to seeing how he could do for that Durst dice roll. But uh, does not look like it was meant to be here tonight for Young Money. 14 to go. We've ran 16 laps, and uh, what's been quite a few, quite a few cautions here in this one. Obviously, the start of the race was pretty wild, um, and then we've had some more incidents there throughout. Now, what's going to be interesting to watch here is the restart, because it looks like the top of the track has just not been working at all for Corey Day. The last two starts, Sunshine's gotten quite a few car lengths on him, rolling into turn number one, and Corey Day's actually lost second to Zeb Wise. So we'll see what Corey tries different here as they work to get the Silva Motorsports 57. As you can see, Larson's helmet is off. So Larson, from hero to zero tonight, unfortunately got the win earlier on, and now we'll head off on the hook. Tony, what's up? Chase, just watching things down here with the nine of Casey Kane. It's, it's, of course, you never wish bad luck on your competitors. I'm certainly not uh, insinuating that's what Kane or any of these guys down here are doing, but they are benefiting from Kyle Larson's uh, misfortune over there uh, and the time it's taking to hook Larson's 57 up and get him going. Though in the wheel, when the tire went down on the right rear side of Casey Kane's car, they needed to put a new wheel cover on it. That was holding them out from getting back out on the track. They thought they were in a big rush. Things got kind of, things got kind of hairy, like they down here in the work area. I know you know all about that, Chase, but when the crew stopped and realized that they still hadn't even brought the 57 back in yet, things were able to slow down a lot here in the work area. They were able to get a new, clean wheel cover on the right rear tire for Casey Kane. You don't want to pack a wheel, especially when it's as heavy up around the top in three and four as it is here at East Bay Raceway Park. So it got a little, got a little western down here for a minute, Chase, but they're all good. Casey Kane's back out on track. Unfortunately, uh, Kyle Larson, our winner from earlier today in round number one of the 2024 season, and he will not get back out on track. Nothing wrong at all with getting a little Western. And man, did you see that right there? The Frozen Farmer pick pine about three cars in a row went to the inside of the racetrack. And I think that was Parker Price Miller who said, hey, if you guys are going to give me a couple free spots, I'm going to go to the outside. The 9P making some great headway here. Parker Price Miller started back in 23rd, and he's up to 12th now. A great run for the law firm as we're going green this time by with 15 laps to go. Green lights come on, and like I said, that outside is just not working on these restarts for Corey Day. Zeb Wise gets back by him for the second spot, but here comes Day right back to life around the outside. But now the 26 of Zeb Wise goes up top. That's going to put the 14 to the bottom behind them. Brad Sweet, big slider on Rico Avery. Those guys were going at it earlier on in the heat race. Or sorry, in the, in the, yeah, in the heat race, I should say. Sweet now back up to fourth. Here comes Brent Marks, gets his way by the 39M of Anthony Macri. Parker Price Miller still on the move. He gets by Anthony Macri. PPM, wow, he is absolutely rolling here in the midway portion of this race. Close call there with Spencer Basie. He's going to go around the outside of Chris Windham or at least try to. Parker Price Miller now into the eighth position after starting in the 23rd spot. Meanwhile, Sunshine, a six or seven car length lead over Zeb Wise, then Corey Day, then Brad Sweet, Rico Avery. They're side by side for fourth. Your second and third place cars both running the outside of the racetrack. Your leader is glued to the bottom on both ends. Cole Macedo pulls the 16T into the infield. Anthony Macri gets around the outside of Chris Wynn. We got two cars spun in turn number four. The nine of Casey Kane, the 24D of Danny Sams the third, both spun looking the wrong direction. Chase, you got the 16T of Cole Macedo in here. He came off under green flag uh, conditions, but it's the 83 Roth Enterprises car of Dominic Selzy. He has pulled back in as well. Uh, Wood and Brent Ventura and, and the rest of the 83 crew here are taking a look on this thing. Attention's being given to the right front corner of this race car. 
Looks like maybe possibly the uh, torsion arm. Yeah, the mount has come off towards the back, uh, back over the uh, the back part of the axle. Uh, that torsion arm not mounted anymore, and I don't know. No, no, torsion arm's still okay, actually. No, torsion arm is fine. They go to the look at the right rear corner of the car here. High limit officials on the scene. Late in the race like this, you know, time in the work area is an absolute essence, and there's not as much of it as it feels like there is at the start of these races. Dominic Selzy getting attention here, trying to get him back out on track. Looks like Aaron Reitzel also pulled the 87 into the infield, and he is out of the car. Here's the comp cams replay. We'll see what happened to Casey Kane and Danny Sams. Looks like Kane, yeah, it looks looks like Kane was the car that went around there. Danny Sams was right behind him with absolutely nowhere to go. Kane just spins uh, self spin there and Danny Sams runs into the side of him. So looks like Casey Kane kept going and Danny Sams, I see him in the infield, Tony. Chase, if you uh, were wondering about that really great in-depth detailed report I was just trying to give you on Dominic Selzy, I didn't know what was wrong with it and it turns out there was nothing wrong with it. He pulled in off the track and I uh, just spoke to Woodman on that 83 car and I said, what, what was he saying? He goes, nothing. He just came in or I asked what was wrong with it. He said nothing. He just came in and said something felt wrong on the right front. They took a good look at it and they couldn't find anything. The 87 of Reitzel's got his helmet off. We're getting over here to take a look at Sam's as they go to work on the right front corner of that car. His second trip back here into the work area. Chase Danny Sam's not having the Tuesday night here at East Bay they were hoping for. Definitely it looks not. Like, it looks like they're going to put on a new right front tire here for this one. Not sure what's bent. The tire does not look down. Well, unfortunately, Tony, the, there is no guaranteed time down there in the work area. Ten laps or less to go in the feature, and Danny Sams will be trapped in the work area. We're coming back to the green this time by. Ten to go for Sunshine. Sunshine gets a great drive off of turn number four, pulls away from Zeb Wise. There goes Rico, slings the 24 straight to the outside of the racetrack, coming after Corey Day and Zeb Wise. Three wide for Zoe. Oh, Rico hops the right rear of Wise. How did that car stay on the ground? And it didn't flip. I have no idea. Rico still going at it with Wise for third. Holy cow. Rico was looking straight at the ground right there, the front end. Wow, that was wild stuff as we come across the line this time by eight laps to go. Brad Sweet slides in front of Avery. Got to imagine there's some damage on the 24 as they work down the front straight away. Avery works the car back to the inside and turns one and two as here comes Anthony Macri to the outside of Avery. He's into the top five. Anthony Macri started back in 20th position, trying to make his way up to fifth to the outside of Avery. He's got it off of turn four. Anthony Macri driving like a man possessed here tonight from 20th up to 5th, and he's not done there. Coming after Brad Sweet for 4th. Race for the lead, shaping up. Here comes Corey Day. Corey Day tracking down Sunshine Tyler Courtney for the top spot. They both run the bottom in 1 and 2, but Day likes the top side in 3 and 4. Corey Day in just his second high limit, sorry, the third high limit start of his career, trying to park it in victory lane here at the Battle at the Bay. Just his second ever time here at the East Bay Raceway Park. The other time was yesterday. Here he comes to the outside of Connor Morrell, trying to get a run on the 7BC down the front stretch. Four laps to go. Four laps to go. The two-time All-Star champion in the defending King of the West Sprint Car Series champion, gonna duke it out for the win here at East Bay Raceway Park. Here comes Corey down the front straightaway. Where does he go into turn number one? Back to the bottom. Doesn't show the Courtney that he's coming. Makes a little mistake right there, but he's still got some time. Next time by will be two laps to go. He's going to have just enough time to put a move on Sunshine down the front straightaway. Two to go. And there's traffic in front of your race leader. Sunshine got to deal with Brenham Crouch and Casey Kane. Caution is out. No, as Anthony Macri's around in turn three. Anthony Macri around in turn three. He drove from 20th up to seventh and is looking the wrong direction in turn three. Wow, I was really, really hoping that was gonna stay green. We'll get a comp cams replay here in just a moment. If that would have stayed green, I felt like a photo finish was coming as we look what happened here to Anthony Macri battling with Brent Marks and, oh, and it looked like Marks was gonna do a little lane swap there. He forgot to put the blinker on and Anthony Macri was next to him and little uh, left rear to right front action and sent the 39M around. 
Tony, what's up? Chase, talked to uh, Cole Macedo, asked him what was wrong. He said right rear bird cage uh, came apart on the car. He could feel that's why he came in. And then I just uh, stuck my head in and asked Aaron Reitzel about the 87 RSR entry. He said bad vibration developed after they got in the wall earlier in the race. Not sure what's exactly wrong with it, but it got to a point where he just didn't want to keep going with that vibration. Good stuff down there, Tony Laporte. Thanks for keeping us updated on some of the drivers that have had issues here in this race. There's been quite a few of them. We got a parking lot down there. It's a parking lot party in the infield with some of our sprint cars. Uh, we've got two laps to go, ladies and gentlemen. Who is going to win the final 410 race at East Bay Raceway Park? Will it be Sunshine? Will it be Corey Day? Or maybe will it be Zeb Wise? We're going to find out. Here we go. Three laps to go. Corey Day, a decent start right there. You got to wonder if maybe one of Sunshine's crew guys told him to go to the top of the racetrack in three and four. We'll see what he does down here. Nope, he's going to stick that car right back to the bottom. Two laps to go. This time by Corey Day is going to have something down the front straightaway. Looks to the outside of the right rear corner of Tyler Courtney. He might have heard him right there. We'll see what Sunshine does on this end of the speedway. No, goes back to the bottom. They're going to come to the white flag this time by. We've got some issues on the back stretch. We're going to keep on going. Oh, the checkered flag is out, and Sunshine is going to get the win. I got ahead of myself right there, and we got a big wreck off the fourth quarter. Car upside down. It is going to be Corey Eliason along with Rico Abreu involved. The checkered was out. I, for some reason, thought I saw the white. So Corey Eliason and Rico Abreu both together off of turn four. Eliason getting upside down after the checkered flag had already came out. Tony. Chase, Chase, a little bit of uh, context I can provide you on that. I did not see what sent Rico Abreu up and over, but by the time I turned around and looked, he had been a single car incident uh, from what I could see, at least the back half of his flip. And it was Corey Eliason coming through, heading for the checkered flag, just trying to avoid the tumbling number 24 of Rico Abreu uh, and Eliason just ran out of room as happens so often. So um, again, I did not see what caused the 24 to get upside down, but it was Eliason coming in at the very back end of Rico's wreck. Uh, Rico just came down at the wrong time, tagged the number eight of Corey Eliason, and that's how Eliason ended up in this again. Not sure how Abreu began to flip, but Eliason was kind of a casualty in the aftermath. We've got a cop cams replay about to find out what happened to those two drivers here. Coming into the final corner, Rico looks to the inside of Zeb. Why? Oh, short, a slider came up a little bit short. Rico actually got upside down, was looking at the sky there, and then the aid of Eliason came in with a head of steam there and gets into Rico, sends him upside down. Rico looking at the sky there, doing the old old wheelchair there and here comes Elias and trying to avoid gets into him and tips it over on its side well sunshine Tyler Courtney he is your winner here tonight for the final race at East Bay Raceway Park the battle at the bay great stuff all the way throughout that main event Corey Day made it very very exciting waiting for sunshine to clear the scales and then he can head to Whiskey Myers victory lane and there it is. Sunshine clears the scales. He's making his way over to Whiskey Myers. Victory.
Tyler Courtney out of the car. He is the winner of the final race at East Bay Raceway Park. Make some noise for Sunshine, your winner here tonight at East Bay. He'll climb off the top of the NASA Energy Drink number 7 BC and have a word with Tony Laporta down there in Whiskey Myers Victory Lane. He gets it done here at the Battle at the Bay, Tony. Tyler Courtney, 13th in the feature a little bit earlier today. I think you went 16th to 13th, not the race you guys wanted at all. And then you pick up the victory here. You're so good here at East Bay Raceway Park. You swept the season opener here last year with the All-Star Circuit of Champions. Man, why are you so good at this racetrack? I don't know. We just uh, we've been fast ever since the first year we came here. I think in 2021 we ran fourth. To, I think Donnie Shots won that night. So um, and then uh, we ran. We won one race. The next year we ran second in the other one or third or something like that. And then uh, uh, last year we won both. So we, we just have a pretty good pretty good package for here. It sucks it's uh, the last last 410 race. I know they got 360s either this weekend or or following week, but. Uh, just an awesome racetrack. I think they did a, a hell of a job today for running two features. And, uh, yeah, hats off to everyone here at East Bay. And, uh, like I said, sad to see it go. Thank you, all you fans, for coming out and supporting uh, them for their, their final 410 race and uh, supporting us at High Limit. And, uh, yeah, just uh, awesome. It's a 50-50 day. Earlier wasn't the, the best feature, but uh, uh, to come back um, and, and win tonight uh, just shows the grit that my guys have. And everyone here with Nostalgia to Drink, Class Marshall Racing, just uh, – how much determination we have to, to be uh, great. And uh, we have a, uh, a little bit of uh, a road to hoe, you know, running 13 today. And I think Brad ran top top five both nights. But uh, it's a long season. It's just a great great way to start our, our, our year off with two wins down here in Florida. And uh, we'll try and keep it going. As a high limit, high roller, $1,000 gets donated to a charity of your choice. Do you have a charity at the top of your mind you want to see that money go to? Yeah. Um, I, I was fortunate enough to, to get to do this a few times last year. Um, with the All-Stars and uh, happy to see it come back um, and thank you to the, the anonymous donor for doing this. It's a, a cool thing to do and um, I, 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 my buddy here, Ben actually is here with us tonight. Uh, he's got a, a organization called Races for Autism and, and today's champions that uh, you know uh, support autism awareness so awesome to, to have him here tonight and get to give him uh, you know thousand dollars for, for their foundation is just uh, incredible. And Tyler talked about it. That's a really cool deal that goes on. We have an anonymous donor who has partnered up with High Limit Racing who every time a high roller, a full-time season driver wins a feature this year, that anonymous donor is going to donate $1,000 to a charity of a high roller, that winning driver's choice. So thank you for making that donation. And then finally, we didn't get to get to our Butler Built Professional Seat Systems Hot Seat question during the dash draw. So this is going to take a hard left here in Victory Lane, but we have a Butler Built Professional Seat Systems Hot Seat question submitted by Chase Grimm, and he wants to know, who is your celebrity crush? Uh, either Shania Twain or Jen Jennifer Aniston. Shania Twain, I know you love that 90s country karaoke. Ladies and gentlemen, Tyler Courtney wins night two of Battle at the Bay. Shania Twain, celebrity crush right there. That's what I'm talking about. Sunshine gets it done here and scores the win. Corey Day, the young Californian, driving like a seasoned veteran out there. Boy, I'll tell you what, that was a lot of fun to watch. You, I think, made some fans out here on the East Coast. It was a lot of fun to watch. Was it as much fun to participate in? Yeah, it was. Track was badass. Hats off to the whole track crew. Uh, I wish the top would have been in one and two. I, you know, I could have made more speed and uh, maybe been able to mount a charge on him earlier than than uh, I did or I was able to. But uh, can't complain with second. And uh, you know, I just got to give big thanks to my whole crew. You know, Shane, Stefan, Eddie, Preston. Uh, you know, it's everyone at home that couldn't make it. And, uh, you know, Four Seasons Instructors, Myers Construction, uh, Factory Kane, Paul Kissler, FK Roddens, uh, just everyone on the 14 this year that uh, believes in us and, you know, helped us put a program together to come, you know, race nationally. Well, you're making a lot of people believe in you. Same question to Tyler Courtney. We didn't get to get to our Butler Built Professional Seat Systems hot seat question during the dash draw. So I'm going to ask you here now. Chase Grimm submitted the question. He wants to know, Corey Day, who is your celebrity crush? Margot Robbie. That was just, you knew that. I didn't even tell you I was going to ask you that. You had that ready to go. That one's easy, man. Margot Robbie. Second place, Corey Day. Congratulations to the young driver from Clovis, California. And now we move to another driver from California. Brad Sweet, man, crazy weekend. You finish up third. That was a wet and wild race out there. What was your point of view during those 30 laps here? Yeah, it was tough. Obviously, I uh, got the lead early and, and was running the bottom and got to lap traffic and tried to move to the top. And 
uh, that wasn't the right place to be, but just didn't feel like we had the, the car, you know, quite quite right there to, to maneuver through lap traffic or, or make enough speed. Uh, Tyler was definitely better, so I uh, just got to get our East Bay notebook a little bit better for next year when we come back, or I don't know if there is going to be a next year, but if it, this sandy dirt's just a little bit a little bit unique, and uh, we just miss it a little bit, to be honest. These, these young guys uh, were on it tonight. Corey was fast, uh, obviously. Uh, you know, hats off to Sunshine. He's uh, he's got some laps here, and you could see. You know, he knew he knew exactly where to be and, and how to drive the racetrack. So, uh, great great uh, weekend for the Napa car. We just uh, got to get a little bit better so we can get some wins. Okay, our Butler built professional seat systems hot seat question. We didn't get to do it during the dash draw, so I'm going to ask it to you here right now. Chase Grimm wants to know, Brad Sweet, who's your celebrity crush? A uh, celebrity crush. I don't know. My wife's here, so I don't want to I don't want to get in trouble. But uh, uh, we'll go back to old school. Uh, let me let me think. Uh, Shania Twain. How about that? You can't say that. Tyler Courtney said Shania Twain already. He did. Well, me and Tyler are from the same, uh, apparently the same generation. Because I bet Corey Day didn't say Shania Twain. I know you like to uh, do karaoke to '90s country, so Shania Twain. That will stand. Brad Sweet in third. Corey Day in second. But it is sun shining down here in uh, Florida for the final 410 wing sprint car race at the East Bay Raceway Park Chase. That race was a woolly one. Uh, there was a lot more cars sitting in the infield, I think, than anybody expected when we went green on the final 30 laps here today. But wow, crazy busy day to kick off the 2024 High Limit Racing season. Bunch of great race cars and a bunch of great people make up the pit area that travel around the country with High Limit Racing. I'm super excited and very grateful to be a part of it here in 2024. Man, Chase, I think we are in for a really fun year here in 2024. I 100% agree with there, Tony. Great stuff from you all night long, keeping us updated, getting the good storylines, and asking some interesting questions down there as well. Appreciate your hard work as you take a look at our top three, getting some pictures with all the good stuff. As uh, Well, let's take a look at a little race recap here from what we saw in that feature. There's the very beginning of the race as Dominic Sells and Corey Day get together. That's kind of what got this, uh, this race off to a wild start there is some more great battling here. This was for the lead early on as Brad Sweet and Tyler Courtney split the lap car of Connor Morrell. And then here is a just a great racetrack, man. I mean, two lanes the entire way. And look at this stuff right here. Race for, for second. Seb Wise was up there. You got Sunshine, or you got uh, Brad Sweet. You got Corey Day up there as well. Lap traffic all over the place. You couldn't ask for much more than what we saw here tonight. Zeb Wise leading this race briefly in car number 26. And how about that move right there from Sunshine to squeak right in front of him. And then Corey Day comes screaming around the outside to take that second spot and then the lead for a few moments as well. Barely missing great avoidance there from Tyler Courtney as there's Kyle Larson, the end of his night. And then Rico Abreu right here. And Brad Sweet kind of getting after it there for around the top five position as Rico makes it three wide. And how about this right there? That was one of the craziest things I have ever seen somebody do. Rico probably wasn't expecting to stay on all four wheels there at the end of that one. Good move there from Macri before he actually exited stage left from contact with Brent Marks. And here we come down to the few laps ago. There's the white flag right there that I missed uh, at the end of that race. And to the checkered, Sunshine able to get the win. Corey Day. And then Brad Sweet, and then we had this big wreck right at the end. Man, that was a hard hit into the wall for Rico Abreu. Not only was he looking at the racetrack earlier on, he was also looking up at the sky as Corey Eliason comes in, gets into him, and there is your winner, Sunshine Tyler Courtney, winning race number two of the season. Man, oh, man, there was so much good stuff here tonight. Uh, I mean, there's so many things that happened. I mean, obviously, it was a long day. We had two features, but... Man, there were so many good battles. There's so many good storylines to look forward to. I'm already looking forward to next week at Golden Isles. And speaking of Golden Isles, let's look at the schedule, the upcoming schedule for the High Limit Racing Series. Golden Isles next week, February 22nd and 24th. That is a pairing with the Lucas Oil Late Model Dirt Series over there in Georgia. Then on April 9th at Riverside International Speedway for the first race of the Midweek Money Series, we'll head over to Texarkana 67 Speedway on April 12th. April 13th, the Texas Motor Speedway for the Stockyard Stampede. April 14th, RPM Speedway. And then Red Dirt Raceway for the Midweek Money Series second race on April 16th. And Southern Oklahoma Speedway, the High Limit Hustle on April 19th. If you want tickets to those events, you can either go to highlimitracing.com or if you're watching at home on Flow, scan that QR code right there and we can get you some tickets right now for some of our upcoming events.